What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to give you a sneak peek at a new free course we have coming out and go over our objection handling module for you. So this is objection handling from a very high level overview. Um, I like to teach objection handling in a few different ways, right? So you have the thought process behind it, you have the psychology of objections, where they stem from, and then we have tactical sort of um, solutions to handle objections, okay? So the most common objections are gonna be things like money, there's gonna be things like I need to speak with my partner or my wife, um, I'm not ready, but they all stem from the same problem, which is a lack of belief in either you, a solution, or themselves, okay? And once you figure that out and, and you understand how to sell consultatively, which is the style of sales that we do more so than anything, um, you're gonna be able to take objections and just break them down like it's nothing um, and close a lot more deals. So we're gonna jump into my computer and go ahead and dive into this objection training. Um, this is a good one. So obviously objections are a part of sales. It's something that is always gonna be present and you getting really good at handling objections is gonna be the difference between closing maybe 15% and 30% or maybe 30% and 50%. Um, so it's a really, really big like difference maker in your income, how much you can close and, and the commissions you're gonna make. So I like to teach objections by understanding why they happen, the psychology behind them, and then examples of how to handle them, okay? So objections ultimately come down to a lack of trust or a lack of belief, okay? Whether that's in you or the offer or themselves or something else. Um, sometimes people don't actually have enough money or they have real objections but credit and financing exist for those things. If you're getting objections after what seemed like a great call, the prospect either lacks belief in themselves or in you and your offer. This can be prevented before they come up, but the reality is you will almost always have objections. So the question is, how do we handle them and close the deal when prospects object or show resistance to moving forward? And this is how. So the psychology behind objections, um, simply put, people don't believe in their ability to make things happen or in your ability to make them happen for them or achieve a certain result. That's the reason that they're on a call looking for help in the first place. So you guys need to understand first and foremost, people are on a sales call with you because they have a problem. They have a problem because they're not doing something right or, or something is not going right. Um, if they were not on that call, they probably wouldn't have a problem anyway, if that makes sense. So just knowing that they're on the sales call means they have a problem and they haven't fixed it yet and if they start to give you objections, you can kind of understand why they have that problem in the first place. And then we need to handle those. Sales is all about passing belief and certainty to a buyer. This is done through psychology and reframing things for your prospects so that they can see things from a different perspective. If someone lacks the self-belief that they can do X thing, why would they spend money on a solution to help them do so? Maybe they want to do this thing, but in the back of their mind, they don't think it'll happen. Um, guys, easiest way to understand this is if I told you like tomorrow that I could give you a Lamborghini for $30,000 cash and you had literally zero dollars in the bank, you would do everything in your power to come up with that $30,000 cash because you know a Lamborghini is worth much, much, much more than that. Okay. Even if you had zero dollars, it's the same way with our offers. First off, if you have objections coming up, it's because something went wrong and there's a lack of belief in, in either you, the offer, or themselves to where they are not willing to do whatever it takes to make that thing happen, okay? Secondly, the other side of that is people are willing to do whatever it takes for things that they deem worthy, okay? So we need to paint the picture for them that, and give them the belief and the trust to get whatever it is that we're selling um, and, and to be willing to make that happen, okay? Maybe people have been burned before. Maybe they just flat out don't think they can do things outside of normal routines that they live in. Um, but in order for us to shift their belief system, we need to use a couple of psychological shifts to our advantage. So the main three that I like to teach are belief in self, belief in solution, and then a big one here is just the social proof that other people have done it, okay? So let's talk about beliefs. You need to understand the beliefs or lack of that a prospect has. Maybe they want to build a business, but at the end of the day, or at the end of their call, their lack of belief is stronger than their desire to change. So you have two things here. You have your desire to change and your desire to do something, and then you have your lack of belief. If the lack of belief is stronger than the desire to change, someone will never buy your offer. So we need to flip those, kind of like a seesaw. So we can shift their belief with phrases like, John, I think we had a great conversation about your goals and where you wanna be in the next year. So why are you hesitating to change? 
John, I feel like there might be a lack of confidence in either our solution or in yourself. And to be honest, I'd, I would love to help you. Um, so which is, is it, is it a problem with our offer and, and the way we do things, or is it a problem, a problem with you believing in yourself to get it done? You're nervous. I totally understand. I actually had a gentleman a few months ago with the exact same problem that you have, John. And you know what he decided to do? He took a leap of faith and now he's living the exact same dreams that he told me about on his call. So that's the social proof one. If your lack of confidence is in yourself, why is that, John? Like, why are you not confident? Why do you not believe you can do this? Um, how do we overcome that? Have you missed? And I love this one, guys. If someone's being really, really hesitant, and, and you can kind of tell it's a pattern in their life, ask them this question. John, have you missed any other opportunities in your life before because of your lack of belief? That's that's a real big one that's gonna make them be like, fuck, I'm, I'm really, really, I'm missing a lot of opportunities. I need to get over this. But the point of each of these questions is you're opening up your prospects problems so that we can isolate and handle them. And then th this takes us to our next step. So again, belief, trust, it's, it's all the, uh, the same thing. It's what all objections are based on but now is how to actually handle them. So handling objections is a process and we're gonna cover each step. Now that you understand the root of all objections, which is trust and belief, we can start tearing them apart in order to help our prospects see things from a different perspective. And this is the process. So number one, isolate, then we confirm, we understand and we empathize, we reframe, and we send it back to the prospect. So here's an example. And this is just a dialogue back and forth. 10K is a lot of money, man. I mean, I, I can't afford it. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do this. I totally understand that, John. So what you're saying is you, you just don't believe you can do this. Like, why not? I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just really busy. I don't know if I have the time required to, to do something like this. You know, like building a whole business and I have a wife and, and kids to take care of. Tell me about it, bro. <laughs> like, Obviously, I don't have uh, I don't have a wife and kids yet, but I can imagine how busy you are. Um, but John, is it cool if I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Cool. So, John, you told me earlier that this is like really, really important to you, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And that uh, building a business would allow you to have more time with your family. Is that correct? Yeah, that is. So, John, if this is important to you, do you think you'd be able to squeeze in just a couple of hours a day to make that work? You know, like you said, it's that important, like on your priority list, is that something that you can manage to make happen? Yeah, I mean, when you put it like that, I think I could make a few hours um, or I could get a few extra hours a day. So guys, that's just a loose example. Um, and that's like an easy to overcome objection. But you can see here, it starts off with, hey, like 10K is a lot of money, right? So I'm isolating and confirming. I'm figuring out, you're saying X is the problem, not Y, right? So he says 10K is a lot of money. That's not the actual objection here, right? The objection is he doesn't think he has the time, which is completely different. So you need to understand before you handle the wrong one. So I'm isolating and I'm confirming which one it is. Then next I'm understanding and empathizing. So like, hey, I feel you dude, or I totally understand. Um, give a little bit of humor, like just relate to them, right? You're a human being, they're a human being. Make them feel like you, you understand them. Then you reframe it. So. John, if this is important to you, like, don't you think you can squeeze in some time to make it work? So instead of you saying, oh, I understand, man, but you need to do this, which is what a, a terrible closer would do. We're saying, John, I totally understand that. But what about this? Or have you thought about this? Or, or maybe uh, look at it from this angle or perspective, right? So guys, this is the framework and the mental model on how we handle objections. It's similar for, for all objections. Money, I need to speak with my partner, whatever. Um, learning how to handle objections is one of the most important parts of becoming a really, really great closer. And I'd love to go in depth with you guys on like we've, we've got hours and hours and hours of objection training, um, but this stuff takes a, a while right there's a lot of a lot of in-depth that you can go on on objections because there's so many um but i think this will give you a good high level understanding from from this free course